Well, happy Saturday, everyone. Joshua Severe Weather. I'm a meteorologist in the Raleigh area. As you can see, I am in the mountains this week with family in Banner Elk. And appreciate you joining me here this afternoon. The tropics are beginning to finally wake up. Uh, they've been awake for about a month in the Pacific, but now on the Atlantic side as well. Uh, but we're not yet to the peak of the season. So at least for the time being, uh, the first few systems we're tracking are not going to be uh, major systems by any stretch, in fact, short-lived ones, but uh, we are going to continue to get busier as we head into the month of July. So I appreciate you joining me here today. I hope everybody has been able to stay cool. Uh, my condolences. I heard the guy who invented the heat index passed away at 93. It's probably because he felt like it was 111. So anyway, that one's for later. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and talk about the tropics here. So I'm sharing my screen with you and do me a favor if you have not yet joined uh, or I should say subscribe to the Josh's Severe Weather channel, I encourage you to do so. Um, we are going to be doing a lot more in the way of video work this summer and fall with hurricane season. It's been a little quiet for now, but that will change. Uh, here's a look at our satellite image from Tropical Tidbits. And uh, you can see um, things are not super busy in the Atlantic, but we're starting to see some things flaring up here around Mexico. Now, uh, the Mexican side of the, uh, the Pacific side of Mexico has been very busy. We had uh, Hurricane um, Eric, uh, a little over a week ago, hit as a major hurricane. That's the first time that happened before the month of August on record. And that was in uh, far southwestern Oaxaca uh, to the east and down the coast from Acapulco. Well, unfortunately, that area is not done for the season. It's very early. We've got another system we're tracking here that has a high likelihood of developing into Flossie. But I want you to turn your attention to this feature right here. And I will learn to draw in a straighter line. That was never my strength. Uh, right now, not really anything of sorts, but we do have an, uh, a Hurricane Hur uh, Hunter aircraft that is heading into that as we speak. I'm going to bring you some of that data here in just a moment to show you what's going on with it. But some of our forecast models are indicating that this area, uh, Invest 91L, has a 70% chance of becoming a named system over the next couple of days. And uh, it's going to be a quick developing situation. We saw this happen last year around this time with Tropical Storm Chris. The next name on the list is Barry. And right now there's a chance it could become at the very least a depression, if not a minimal tropical storm. Uh, on the same uh, side of things or on the other side of Mexico, we have a pretty good chance we're going to have a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, uh, by the time we get into next week here on the Pacific side of things. 90% uh, chance of that developing. So here is the latest outlook from the Hurricane Center. This just came out at two o'clock. And you can see for yourself, nhc.gov, uh, we are now looking at a pretty well-defined surface circulation starting to form now over the Bay of Campeche. Uh, not technically, technically it is in the Gulf of America or Mexico, but more confined to the Bay. And this is going to stay on the south side of things, but we do have Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft about to get into that system here this afternoon. So we're going to know a little bit more shortly after this video goes live, uh, but it's very possible that by tonight, we could have tropical storm watches and warnings issued. So there's not a lot of time to prepare for this situation if you are in parts of Mexico. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a strong storm. If anything, we're talking a big rainmaker, which we saw last year with Chris. Uh, so here's a look at our infrared from Tropical Tidbits. And you can see over the last few hours, it's disorganized. This does not look like anything um, that is set to go to town here, but it is beginning to gather some sort of organization and storms are picking up right along the coastline here, as you can see here. So at the very least, a lot of rain coming, uh, but the wind field is what we're going to have to watch here in the next day, as this is going to be over very warm water over the BOC here. It has a chance of becoming a tropical storm or depression. Here is the radar uh, from Mexico, and I'm going to pull up the uh, Yucatan radar here so you all can see. We're starting to see a bit of a feeder band here getting going here. I'm going to I'm going to annotate this for you all here. Just give me a second while I load it. Um, but you can see here that the actual center of the of the circulation as it's forming is fairly clear of thunderstorm development. It's just made its way over water. It's spent about maybe 12 hours where it's now finally starting to show some organization. But we do have some heavier rain on the southwest side here lashing the coastline. We also have this feeder band here beginning to form on the northeastern side. This is where the really heavy stuff comes down. Now, at this point, we don't have the winds to support a major tropical system. Uh, it may be classified a depression, maybe even a tropical storm by tonight or tomorrow morning, uh, but it is not really anything super extreme at this point. It's still very sloppy. It's very lopsided, and it's got a short amount of time to actually form into anything if it does so. Uh, here's Hurricane Hunter aircraft now getting close to the center. You can see 
Uh, winds right now up to about 20, 25 miles per hour at flight level. So we're not getting into the strongest of the wind. That's probably from that band I just showed you on the northeastern side here. So until this aircraft goes all the way through the center and sees all four quadrants of it, we don't really know yet what we're dealing with and neither do the models. Uh, so right now we're just watching a formation of a tropical disturbance. And you can see the pressure is still fairly high on this 1011 millibars. So it's not strengthening anytime soon into anything major but it is beginning to organize. So once we get a core to form, uh, we do have the possibility of this becoming a quick system, but that's probably not happening this afternoon. It may not even happen tonight until very late in the night or first thing on Sunday. This is a look at what the aircraft has shown us. And again, until it gets through everything, we're not really gonna know quite yet what kind of an entity of a system we're dealing with. Uh, but right now you can see that we are dealing with a fairly moist system here uh, with disorganized showers and storms. The GFS model, which has not been the best here this season, we're not going to lie about that so far, doesn't really know we have something out here. Um, we're running a hurricane model on it, and until the aircraft take that data and ingest it and feed it back to the models, it doesn't know what's going on. So you can see it's actually forming this Pacific system here. So it's taking the energy from the, from the bay and taking it across here. So it doesn't know that it's out there, but it does show a hurricane forming, which would be flossy here. So we're going to talk about that one here in the video. Now, the HWARF model... This is a tropically tuned model here. Um, this one does, in fact, show some development here, shows some organization. And, uh, of course, I hit the wrong button, but here we go. Um, let's take it back here to this uh, lunchtime hour here on Saturday. You can see it doesn't really have low pressure yet, but we do have a bit of a weak circulation here not far from the coast this afternoon. Flash forward to tonight, and we see a weak area of low pressure beginning to try to form close to the coastline. And it's hovering just off the coast here, so it has a chance uh, during the day tomorrow to try to organize into something uh, more like a depression or even a tropical storm. Now, it's running out of real estate to do it because you can see by tomorrow evening it's already making landfall. But uh, I would not underestimate how quickly something like this could actually get together. Uh, we saw that last year here with Tropical Storm Chris. It, it spent a day organizing. Same thing a little farther south became a tropical storm. It actually took six lives with it. So we don't want to completely ignore it, even though it's not really a major system at this point. Here's where the model guidance uh, is beginning to form our invest and take it. And you can see a track generally to the west-northwest with a landfall expected Sunday night, somewhere near Tampico, Mexico, possibly on both sides here. But uh, going to spend about a day or so over the bay before uh, getting close to landfall. It does have a window where it can organize. And you can see... Tropical models right now do have some gradual organization here, even a few make it a tropical storm by uh, lunchtime to afternoon on Sunday before it weakens when it makes landfall. But again, uh, the system doesn't hasn't formed, so models are still going to struggle until it does form to try to figure out what exactly happens. Now, I do want to show you here, uh, this is new this year, this is the Google AI model here, and you can see where our tracks take the system very close to Tampico here. I'm going to slow this down for you. And you can see here, if we look at the model and we look at the graphic forecast here, you can see um, pretty good agreement on the track of the system. And then finally, we look at some form of landfall here coming um, sometime tomorrow evening near or just to the south of Tampico. Not a lot of spread here. So we are seeing decent amount of agreement and we do see multiple ensemble members showing this system. But until we get a named storm, we're not going to have a cone. We're not going to have actual track. We're just going to have a bunch of models that try to guess at what's going to happen. So I'm going to come back to this for our Pacific system. But I do want to take a look out beyond this. You can see in the Gulf of America and in particular off the East Coast, especially the mid-Atlantic coast, temperatures are running well above average sea surface temperatures. In particular, I'm concerned about how much above average we are from near Louisiana over to the Florida Panhandle, even down to Tampa Bay. It was a hot uh, week last week, and now we're running a few degrees hotter than average. And you can see that heat is also built up in the Southwest Atlantic and uh, near the Mid-Atlantic into the Chesapeake Bay. We had some record highs, obviously, last week, and those warm waters have responded to that now, and they continue to stay on the warm side. So we now have warm enough surface temperatures to support tropical development closer to home here. Typically, up until about now, we don't look for a lot to form. Every now and then we get a, a rare instance where something does try to form. Uh, but with water temperatures running above average, we can say confidently now that these water temperatures in the northern Gulf, in the southwest Atlantic, are more where you would expect to see them at the beginning of August and not the end of June. So that is obviously some concern that we have to have. Uh, but again, it is still pretty early in the season. So as we look here to Weather Bell, you can see 
uh, the probability of something trying to form here into a depression or storm begins to climb in the next couple of days. It's actually uh, 60, 70 percent uh, between Sunday evening and Monday evening, right as it's making landfall and then it falls apart. Uh, but models are now showing a piece of energy comes down with a front and right now not a lot of support for it. But at the end of the week, around the 4th of July, um, the chances begin to at least start showing up on our radar for something to gradually form here around Friday or Saturday of next weekend. And right now, these are certainly not set in stone. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth on our models. We saw yesterday a little bit better chance, earlier in the day a, a lesser chance. So right now, just something to watch, nothing to cancel plans over, nothing like that. But anytime you've got a front coming down into the northeastern Gulf, and into the Carolinas, we have to watch for something to try to spin up, especially when the waters are running as warm as they are. So we'll keep an eye on that. The European AI ensembles do have a few solutions that are trying to show some development here, not before Friday morning, but as we get later into Friday, into Saturday, you can see uh, we do have a couple of solutions. One um, showing some development next Sunday or Sunday night, uh, southeast of the Carolinas or Georgia. Uh, we also have a spin up showing up on one here. Uh, that moves backwards to the west from near Florida towards Louisiana. But nothing looking too intense at this point. If you take a look at the upper level pattern here from the GFS, you can see why. Right now, things are pretty hostile. We have strong northwesterly flow through the northern Gulf and through the northwestern Caribbean. The only area that is kind of protected from that is the area close to the Mexican coastline over the bay. And that's why we are finally seeing development in that area. As we go into Sunday and Monday, you can see there's actually an upper level low here that backs westward towards Florida. This is going to pick up the wind shear and create hostile upper air winds, uh, which will keep anything really from forming. Now, that hangs out around Florida into next week. And then we see it begin to move east and we start to see a ridge of high pressure from Mexico begin to grow to the east here into the Gulf. And what this does is it lightens the upper level flow and lowers our amount of wind shear. So uh, even though we've got a strong trough that's going to bring us a nice cooling effect into the northeast and mid-Atlantic states by the end of next week, uh, we also will have to watch the tail end of that to see if it tries to split off here. And as you can see, the upper level flow is going to be a lot more, um, a lot less hostile here for anything to form. It'll be uh, more welcoming for something to try to spin up. The challenges we're going to have here are going to be where anything can spin up and how close to land it ends up being. So that's what we're gonna watch here. Uh, the other thing I want to show you all here real quick, uh, we do have Saharan dust. We have one push coming through this weekend, uh, making the skies uh, fairly colorful here over the uh, balance of the weekend. Then we get a little bit of a lull and then another push comes into the Southern Gulf here about the third or fourth. And then we get a lull after that. So this is typically normal where we see a lot of Saharan dust quickly crossing the Atlantic from East to West. Uh, but you can see it does fade as it comes into the Western Caribbean and Gulf by the time we get to next weekend. So we can't use that as an excuse to keep anything from forming. Uh, and I did want to show you here that the GFS is not showing anything crazy over the next week. No cyclone development. So right now, things are still highly uncertain on whether or not that could form, but we're going to have to watch it here. Uh, I do want to show you finally our invest here, which is likely to become our next tropical depression or storm by the time we get to early next week. And we are also probably looking at new advisories coming from this because of the fact that it is close to land. So 90% chance of another tropical storm with Flossie being the name, also a decent chance that we're going to see watches and warnings for the Mexican Riviera. And some of those spots uh, were just hit kind of hard here a, a little over a week ago by Hurricane Eric. Right now, it's not super organized. We've got a lot of thunderstorms out there, a lot of rain falling along the coast, especially here in Oaxaca and along the bend here of the Bay of or Gulf of Tehuantepec. Uh, but over time, you can see uh, water temperatures are still going to be running on the warm side as we get closer to Acapulco and past Puerto Vallarta and all the way into the Gulf of California and the southern Baja here. We're running above average as we've had a hyperactive start to the season. Uh, so if this does form, right now the majority of the model guidance takes it very close to um, this portion here of, uh, of the southwestern tip. I think it's Puerto Vallarta. I could be wrong. Uh, resort area. And then after that, we have a big split. Some models take it west, just south of the Baja. Others take it right into the Gulf of California. Others hit Cabo San Lucas. So a few days before we've got to watch it. The halves is on it, though. This is a tropical model that is showing some development here. Not so much today or tonight, but as we get into tomorrow night, we may have a tropical depression or even a tropical storm. And Flossie is the next name on the list. And the halves says this thing will strengthen significantly. 
The big question mark is going to be how fast and how close to the coast that happens. Uh, this one shows it becoming a Category 3 hurricane and then weakening as it hits cooler waters near Cabo by the time we get to next Thursday. We need to watch it pretty closely as we do have several uh, ensembles showing this reaching hurricane intensity as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. We also have some that don't show that. Now, beyond that, I want to show you what the U.S. is going to look like here over the holiday weekend next week and beyond. You can see where our area of uh, wetness is expected here. You can kind of see where the boundary is going to be basically lined up here at the end of next week. So fireworks displays are not going to be going off without a hitch here, without any issues going on here near Florida. Uh, we also are going to see a lot of wet weather uh, with moisture coming in to the monsoon area of the southwest, in particular over southeastern New Mexico, where there will be a, an elevated threat for flooding, places like Ruidoso, for example. Uh, you can also see things are going to be drier across the upper Midwest, where we've had so much severe weather over the past week or so. We had a derecho and more storms. As we head to the 4th of July and beyond, Florida wet, typical across the southeast, very wet in the southwest, dry across the plains, typical in the northwest. And then beyond, you can see we will be in for a drier period over much of the eastern and southern U.S., with the exception of Florida, as we get to the week after the 4th here, around July 7th, 8th, and 9th. Uh, so some change is, in fact, coming. Uh, here is a look at the uh, temperature forecast. And you can see here our warm spell in the east sticks around to about the first half of next week. Here comes some much cooler weather coming down around the 3rd and 4th of July. And we should actually have more comfortable temperatures for the northeast, uh, whereas the west will be a little below average. And the upper Midwest, the plains into Canada will be on the toasty side. Uh, so unlike previous summers, uh, we are not roasting in Texas. We're actually roasting in the upper Midwest and cooling off across the Northeast. But it will be back and forth as the following week looks to warm right back up, actually across a good chunk of the country. And with that, we are likely to be looking at some severe weather here across Nebraska into the upper Midwest for the upcoming week. Uh, we do see parameters that are significant enough for severe weather. The next week could be even busier as we see that big dome of high pressure build in. We may have a derecho to deal with at some point after the 4th of July. That is centered on Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, and the prairies of Canada. And then the following week, uh, we could see things turning a little bit less active, but certainly there's still a possibility of severe weather at that point. Uh, so that is all I've got to share with you all today. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I do want to leave you with a quick Christian word of encouragement, and that is the word of God uh, for the people of God. Paul tells the Church of Rome, Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And, you know, I reflect on what's been happening here in the Western Carolina since Hurricane Helene hit uh, last fall, and it's you know been nine months of recovery now, and and I'm seeing, I'm seeing folks that realize that we're not going to be able to stop Mother Nature, we're not going to be able to stop disasters, but we can come together, and God uses us uh, so that we can serve His purpose, and that is to help others recover, that is to allow us to help rebuild uh, in the face of what the enemy wants us to call uh, God's creation, and that is natural disasters. Uh, we have people that actually come together and form a tighter community uh, for the good of God and for the good of each other. And that is the good news I wanted to share with you before I left today. So thanks for welcoming me back on after a layoff here, but I will be back soon. We'll keep you posted on what's going on in the tropics. Have a blessed weekend. See ya.